Their first full day of travel in France, the men set out for Omaha Beach. Some of them had visited battlegrounds of France on previous trips. Others had not returned since the end of World War II. It had been 61 years since D-Day, but their memories were fresh. Standing on the beach they'd fought so hard to reach and claim, they could see few remnants of that great battle. But in their memories, they knew what they'd seen and felt on this beach and during that fight. He was among the first on Omaha Beach. Six decades ago, he was a young Navy lieutenant sneaking onto the beach two hours before the invasion, a daring, dangerous mission to set explosives on German guns. But that was a heavy machine gun emplacement. Within sight of the Germans, in the dead of night, they set their charges, and hours later watched the invasion begin on Omaha Beach. Chaos is what we saw. Now only a few remnants of German fortifications remain on Omaha Beach. But that was a heavy machine gun emplacement. But seeing the ground he and his men fought for brings back vivid impressions. Get the hell out of there. Because as, as we were waiting to get out, why, that's when I took about six or seven dead casualties. The, the, the fire in here was pretty, was pretty intense. Kind of like an old west settler. That's land that I took. I don't know any other way to say it. It's a, it's a sensation, it's a feeling. On D-Day, he commanded 38 men. As he revisits Omaha Beach, only two remained living. World War II veterans now in their 70s, 80s, and 90s die at the rate of 1,500 a day. But you know, there aren't many of us left. How do you describe it? Gee, I don't know. All you see is dead people or wounded people, you know. People have been wounded and people laying around on the beach. I don't know how you would describe it to people, young people. War is uh, an awful thing. All you see is your friends being killed, wounded. Not having served in World War II, I consider an honor to be here with you. Years later, you can look back and realize that it took lots of men and to make this all happen. You made it happen, and your comrades out here made it happen. So, you know, I'm just thankful that we can be here today, and the only reason we can be here is because of you and your comrades that are still here. Following their tribute to those who lost their lives at Omaha Beach on D-Day, one of the veterans looked for the graves of dead comrades. Thousands are buried here in France, and there's a story behind every grave marker. All of these fellows around here, I might have a dozen men in, in here that were in my company, and, uh, and they were all killed, uh, most, of them, most of them, on the 19th of June on Hill 108. That was our, what we called our Purple Heart Hill. And uh, I got up to the top when, that, when the uh, scrimmage was over, I had six men left in my platoon. That's all out of 33. All good men, young, 18, 19 years old. They weren't boys anymore, they were men, you know, good men too. So that's the way that is. It's a, you win some and you lose some, you know.
Many veterans who come here know it might be their last time to pay tribute to friends who died in combat. Six decades after the fighting, the memories of friendships remain dear. It's a shame all the good men have to go, guys like me getting around to be 90 years old. You know? Oh, Pete. Hmm. Pete was a good buddy of mine, and uh, we had a lot of good times together before, uh, while we were stationed at Fort Meade and even in England, too. We, uh, we pounded around together. Goodbye, Pete. <laughs> the World War II veterans had said goodbye to many friends over the decades. And before this journey to the battlefields of Europe was over, they would experience death within their ranks again. One among them would not return home.